Hello everyone. Welcome. This is Becca from Willow Hill Designs and today I'm sharing my completed prompt number three for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Field Notes project and prompt number three is um, Spring Blossoms. And um, for my new subscribers, I'm just showing this is the box that I'm keeping my Field Notes little journal in. Um, and these are just extra pages here that I will be using each time I get a prompt. So this is my little little place where I'll be storing all of this when it's all completed. Um, also for the new subscribers, the title page is sewn to the lining because this lining will be sewn back to back to the book so that you won't see any of the stitches from each page that is um, the, the page that follows. You won't see the back of the stitching. So it'll look like this when you open it. So here's the first one, which was spring bulb, flowers from spring bulbs. And this one was nest that we find in the spring with little birds making their nests. And this one is uh, spring blossoms or spring blooms. Um, so I'll just take this out of here. This again, this is the lining and I just pin it to um, kind of corral it all so that I don't have this big long 72 inch piece of fabric. Same thing here. Um, I pin beyond where I'm working so that I just have this unit instead of a big long piece that I have to deal with that's accordion folded. Um, so here is my finished page for spring blossoms or spring blooms. I'll give you a little close up of that. And the flower that I chose here is the hawthorn flower. Um, we have a hawthorn tree, tree in the backyard and I love it. I love to see its beautiful white blooms in the spring. So I chose that for my spring blossom. Um, so starting up here at the top, I just did a little piece of fabric with um, some script on it to look as if notes were taken from uh, taken on here about this bloom. And then I took a piece a butterfly from a piece of fabric, and this was actually one whole butterfly, and I just cut it in half. Poor little butterfly. Um, <laughs> It was, I thought it was a little too big for up here as one open butterfly. So I just did this cutting in half and made two. So on this butterfly, I used my Derwent watercolor pencils to change the color a tiny bit. It was yellow and orange, and I wanted it to be more of a pinky and peachy color. So I just used my watercolor pencils on that. I did a little bit of embroidery on here. There's some lazy daisy stitches, some French knots, running stitches and straight stitches on here. And then like a pistol stitch here for the little antenna. Um, and I just made a note here blooms that this blooms in spring. Um, and then I sketched on this uh, branch with the hawth hawthorn blossoms. And these, each of these blossoms are separate little flowers that I cut out of um, a white on white fabric because our hawthorn blossoms are white. Um, but as I was stitching them down, I just invisibly stitched all of them down. There wasn't a huge amount of contrast between the background, which is kind of an ivory color, and the blossoms. So I just took a little artistic license here and um, just did a little tiny bit of very pale, pale pink shading on the edges of the petals just to define them with my watercolor pencils. Um, and I liked that. Uh, sometimes blooms will change color as they age, although I don't think ours do, our hawthorns, but I know some blossoms do. Um, so I did that and I, I did the centers with um, just kind of some straight stitches going around the outside and into the center. Um, the stamens are done with a green 
and um, kind of a um, deep, not a hot pink, but a kind of a deep pink, purpley pink little um, end on these stamens. And that, that is how our flowers are. And, um, and I did some stitching with white uh, floss on each of the flowers just to give them that white. I didn't want to stitch the whole flower. I did go around each flower with an ivory pearl cotton just to kind of define the petals without making them stand out too much. So that's ivory and the stitching on the flowers itself is white, white floss. And that's just one strand of floss, DMC floss. And for the little buds, I just did a combination of green and that kind of a deep purpley pink uh, because ours, our blossoms do have that on them. Uh, so that's that. And um, I did add the thorns because we don't have the thornless variety. Our, our tree has thorns on it and um, they have these thorns to protect the fruit. Um, and they are lethal. I have to say they're about two inches long. And so then again, I used um, just a, a sort of a grayish brown and a beige thread combining uh, two strands to do the bark of the branches. Uh, actually, our branches are a little bit more gray, but I just used kind of a brown and uh, a taupe color here. And then I came through with some light colors just to kind of give it an interesting look. Um, and again, here I put Hawthorne in it. The genus is Crataegus or Crataegus. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And down here, a piece of fabric with script again. And I, I have distressed or inked the edges of these and they don't seem to run or I have no problem with them um, spraying water on them and then bleeding or anything. It's the Ranger uh, Distress Oxide inks and I just went around this and also this edge up here and the page itself. I went around that and I just drew a little um, leaf. This is what our leaf looks like on our tree. Some of the hawthorns have a very deeply lobed leaf. Um, ours is not that way. Ours is like this. It's kind of, I forgot what they call that, but that little kind of a spiky edge on the leaf. Drew this on a little piece of fabric, a little piece of muslin. And then I, again, with my Derwent pencils, I came in and um, shaded this a bit. Um, and came in also with some floss, one strand of a darker green just around the edges and then a dark brown up the center, which the leaf does not have a dark brown up the center, it's green. But I was taking all kinds of artistic license here, so why not continue? <laughs> why not continue on? Um, again, this butterfly was done with the Derwent watercolor pencils and Lazy Daisy's French Knots straight stitches on here. I put some white dots around the outside of the butterfly. And then over here, I drew the fruit of our, and labeled it, fruit. I labeled the leaf here, leaf. Uh, drew the fruit for our tree, and it makes little tiny red um, apples, almost makes you think of little crab apples. They're really beautiful, beautiful, bright red, beautiful fruit. Um, not a glossy fruit, but um, just a beautiful color and look very striking on the branches. Uh, so these berries I did with my Derwent uh, watercolor pencils on here and just shaded them. Um, I, I thought if I stitched them, I might lose some of the the uh, detail kind of with them. So what I did was after I had used the pencils on these, I went around the edges with a single strand of uh, floss, DMC floss, which is actually the same color that is here. And just did an outline stitch around these berries to define them a tiny bit. And then here I did a French knot with a dark brown thread. These leaves are done with um, a satin stitch with two colors, a, a darker green, a, a green green, and then a lighter green. 
and um, I thought that that would just give the leaf some kind of interest or look as if the light might be shining on it rather than just the solid green of the leaf. Uh, so there's three leaves here and I accentuated again the vein down the center of these with a brown. And I put my the date on here when I first drew this page up. I drew this um, on August 8th of 2024. So that just tells me and I, I try I'm trying to date each of the pages. Um, this one was done on July 25th. And this one was done on July 11th. And so it's kind of nice to have that record of when they were done. Um, and to in order to stitch this on, I'm just not a fan of these accordion style books at all, just because they're kind of hard to maneuver. So what I did was laid it out flat, my page, and just turned it towards me and I did my stitching, my running stitch that way while it was just flat on the table rather than crumple it all up in my hand. And when I did that, I was getting some puckering where it it didn't lay nice and flat. So I had to take those stitches out and just lay it flat and do my running stitch. So I don't know if anyone else is doing that, but um, it's it's a little bit easier way to attach your page. So these are my first three pages so far um, for spring. We're getting three prompts for each um, season, spring, summer, fall, winter. So I'll just take these pins out so I will be ready to add the next page, which will be summer. And I will just um, put some pins in here. And this will keep this out of my way when I'm stitching or even kind of auditioning colors, although I don't think we really have to match the pages. But um, being that this one started with spring, I'll have another piece of fabric here stamped with summer. And so summer will be stitched on here. So it will look like that as it's opening. It'll go like this and this. This is Hawthorne and then it'll be summer here. So that is my, um, that is prompt number three finished, which gives me some time to maybe work on K3N cloth tails uh, the MOLA for this week. I, I've let that go for a few weeks because I've been working on some quilts and other things. So um, I'm glad to finish a couple of days early and maybe work on something else. This was kind of intensive, but it was fun. It was just lots of fun. So give you one more close up and say thank you very much for joining me today and on this journey, and I'm wishing you many blessings. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.